Welcome to this third video on mechanical ventilation. Um, let's sort of pick up where we left off in the last video. In the last video we looked at this, the sort of four major milestones of a, of a breath um, and we looked at them as, in terms of phases. So we saw that this baseline came along and then there was the start of inspiration. There was that sort of point at which inspiration begins. We then had the inspiratory phase itself. There was then an end inspiration. And then we said we had this baseline phase here. I just want to add one thing to this baseline comment here. It is acceptable to call this a baseline phase, but it may be easier to also view this as as the expiratory phase. So let's put that in here. We can just put that as expiratory phase. When we're looking at um, expiratory there. When we're looking at it in terms of pressure, it, it makes sense to call this a baseline because it is a baseline pressure that would be in the circuit as the breaths go along. But this really is the expiratory phase of so inspiration and then expiration. So why don't we label those? I'll do this in this pink color here. We have our inspiration here. Sorry, this is our expiration here. And then we'll maybe pick another color here. Let's take a green. And then this can be our inspiration. Now, what this enables us to do, when we look at this 60 second period here, you can see if I scroll across here, you can see that we have a series of breaths that are all the same. Well, and they may not be exactly the same in the way I've drawn them, but they, they are supposed to all be the same. So these square breaths, um, we can imagine we're in our pressure, our pressure waveform like we did in the last video. And we have a 60 second period. Now what we can do is by knowing how many breaths we have in this period, so we have, let's see how many we have here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12, okay? With 12 breaths, uh, let's extend. So let's say we have 12 breaths in our, in our, our 60 second period. Uh, 12 breaths. So what we can do now is talk about a total cycle time. And let me def let me write that out here. We can talk about a total total cycle time. And this is important. Okay? So total cycle time is really just how long does this entire breath take? And we're not just talking about the inspiration phase that we've seen here. We're talking about the whole phase from the start of one breath to the start of the next breath. So our cycle would be from here, from the start of this breath to the start of the next breath. Now, if we have 12 breaths being delivered by the ventilator in a minute, then what is our total cycle? Each, if we have 60 seconds uh, of time for all of the breaths, 12 breaths, which means we have a total cycle time of five seconds, right? Five seconds for each of these cycles to take place. Five seconds per breath. Okay, so by knowing how many breaths we have in the minute, which we will set on the ventilator in most modes, so let's say we set a respiratory rate of 12. So here's our, here's our respiratory rate, which we set. Set respiratory rate. That means in the 60 second period, we have 12 breaths which means each breath takes up five seconds between the start of one breath and the start of the next breath. Now what this enables us to do is if we kind of draw, just sort of copy out what we did up here, down here, so we have our green and then we have our expiration. So we remember we said that, let's zoom in a little bit here. Oops, remember we said that the green was inspiration from up here and that this pink color was our expiration. And having worked out that we have 12 breaths in the minute and 60 seconds in a minute, we know that this time here is, is five seconds, right? We've calculated now that this time, this total time of green and purple is five seconds, which is our total cycle time. And now what we can start to do is calculate what, how much of that total cycle time is taken up by inspiration and how much is taken up by expiration. And this is where we'll start to introduce the idea of an IE ratio. Now that color's a little dark. Let's have a brighter color as this is an important topic. Let's take, let's take our white here. So we have an IE ratio, okay, which simply just means inspiration 
to expiration ratio. And that's important. And typically, the expiration is going to be longer than inspiration, but not always. But we can start to see now that over each of these total cycle times, we have a breakdown of part of that total cycle time is taken up by inspiration, and part of it is taken up by expiration. And if we knew this, uh, how long inspiration is going to take, which as it turns out in a pressure control mode, we do, and often in some ventilators in a volume control mode, we do. So let's say that we set, remember how we set our respiratory rate? We set our respiratory rate at 12. And let's say we set our I time, our inspiratory time, T I, we can set our inspiratory time. And let's say we did that at 1.0 seconds. So we set our I time for one second, right? So now that we know that this portion takes up one second, we have five seconds total, which means this portion must take up four seconds. So then when we plug in that to our IE ratio, we see that we have an IE ratio of one to four, okay? Which means that we have four times as long in expiration as we do in inspiration. So let's just zoom out a little bit and see what we've covered. So we've worked out that with having a set number of breaths in a minute, which we can set on the ventilator, that gives us a total cycle time for each breath. And that total cycle time is from the start of one breath to the start of the next breath. Okay, that whole time, including inspiration and expiration. Now inspiration takes up a portion and so does expiration. Now by knowing how long each of those are, we can figure out how long our inspiration lasts, which we set on, in this case, just for the sake of simplicity, we set at one second, oops, we set at one second, meaning that of the five seconds total we have, we have four seconds left. And those four seconds are gonna be for expiration. That giving us an IE ratio of one to four. Okay, so what's gonna happen if we increase, oops, if we increase um, or decrease our respiratory rate? So let's say we keep our I time here the same. We set our I time on the ventilator and we set it as one second. But how about now we, uh, we get to the situation where we increase, sorry, we decrease our respiratory rate to 10, okay? So let's say, let's draw a line down here. And let's say we set our respiratory rate at 10, 10 breaths per minute instead of 12. Okay, so how do we work this out now? Well, we know that there's 60 seconds in a minute, right? And we know that our set respiratory rate is 10. So what's our total cycle time gonna be? What's the, what's the time gonna be between one breath and the next breath, from the start of one breath to the start of the next breath? Well, 60 divided by 10 is six, right? Is six seconds. Oh, that's not how you spell seconds. Six seconds, right, for our total cycle time. So total cycle time equals six seconds. Now, remembering that we said our inspiratory time was one second, so let's draw out that again. So we have inspiration and then expiration, just based on the colors we used in the previous diagram. And we said that inspiration is gonna be one second, right? So we have six seconds total, one second's gone, which means expiration is gonna be five seconds. So now our IE ratio is one to five. Okay, so now you can see that our IE ratio has decreased, has decreased. Remember that if you increase I, if you increase the inspiratory time, keeping everything else the same, you're gonna increase your IE ratio. Whereas really what we've done now is we've reduced, even though our inspiratory time is the same, as a sort of portion or a percentage of the whole cycle time, the inspiratory time has decreased. So we have decreased our IE ratio to one to five. Okay, so that, at the moment that may not seem like how that's too important, but when we start getting into how we ventilate different disease states, playing around with that IE ratio is gonna become important. So this is really just to introduce you to the idea of IE ratio and total cycle time. And how we calculate this and how long inspiration and expiration lasts is gonna differ based on the different modes of ventilation we have. But just this is just for you to understand that IE ratio is simply the ratio of inspiration to expiration and that, when added up, creates our total cycle time. The total amount of time in inspiration plus expiration is our total cycle time. And 
that's based on one ventilatory cycle from the start of one breath to the start of the next breath. In the next video, we'll get kind of a bit more involved in this and start looking at how modes of mechanical ventilation work and how the different, um, how the different modes manipulate IE ratios and things.